on episode 19. This week on Rebel Rebel, I sit down with Range Warrior Accessories, the team of Barry Gordon Kev to talk about guns. And parts for guns. They're a local manufacturing company building high quality accessories for firearms. Things like muzzle brakes, flash hiders, bolt releases, parts kits for the 180B, upper receivers for the 180B2, and more. They're creative, Canadian, and kick-ass. I'm your host, Michael Dean Dargy. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 19, Range Warrior Accessories on Rebel Rebel. Welcome to the Rebel Rebel Podcast. I'm Michael Dargy, and I'm sitting here in the Kensington studio with none other than the team of Range Warrior Accessories. Uh, straight out of Calgary, to my left, I've got Barry. Hi. I've got Kevin. Hello. I've got Gord. Hey. They came down to talk about some of the new stuff that they've got happening right here in Calgary. It's a Canadian company, and it's close to my heart. It's about guns. <laughs> it's close to all of our hearts, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I tell you what, why don't we uh, just do a, a brief round table here? We um, Three guests is a lot, so I want to make sure people know whose voice is whose. And, uh, you know, why don't you just sort of introduce yourself briefly and uh, what you guys are doing. Sure, I'm uh, I'm Barry. I'm uh, more on the business side of uh, of Range War accessories, um, kind of keeping everything in in check financially, and uh, also a gun enthusiast myself. So, I'm Kevin. I'm mostly the technical advisor and designer for RWA. Uh, I tend to be the one that imagines all the stuff, and then we try to turn it into reality. I'm Gord. I'm uh, I have an engineering background. I take all the crazy fun things that come out of Kevin's head and put it down on paper. Yeah, and Gord also. And make it possible. <laughs> yeah, and, and Gord, Gord is the intermediary between uh, myself and Kevin so that Kevin comes up with something and Gord goes, well, Barry, what can we sell that for? And I tell him and then he goes, no, that's not going to work because it's going to cost three times that to make it. So. <laughs> so. It's good that they keep me in check because I would make everything. I don't really yeah. care. <laughs> all the things and you guys I mean uh, I've seen some of your muzzle brakes that you guys have like these things are insane I love them yeah we put quite a bit of work into them so there's a lot of science involved that the average gun guy is not going to pay attention to all they're going to know is that it works when they put it on right and it looks cool that too yeah it looks really cool and you guys are designing an upper yep. is that right upper uh, receiver yeah Yeah. Uh, for the new uh, non-restricted it's a collaboration rifle between Nodak out of the US they do the lower yeah. and uh, we do a fully revamped upper for the original 180B-2 oh, so nice. non-restricted in Canada uh, it's all updated materials all update everything everything Basically, the AR-15 went through five generations of revisions since the 60s, yeah. and the 180 was kind of left alone. Well, we did five revisions in a year, so she's up to date now. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, we caught up. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And you guys do have a uh, you have a parts kit for that as well, because I understand that there's... Uh, and th this isn't... Uh, I don't want this show to be like a plug for the stuff. I'm yeah. just super excited by it, because there's it's, well, we've it's got, been a void. Yeah, we've got everything. We've got we got parts for the legacy, so people who have the, the original 180B-2 uh, that uh, can't find parts anywhere can now actually come to us but we also got parts kits for uh, the current version and stuff as well so well it was important when we started when we first started doing the rifle and doing the upper and designing it we did not want to make the legacy gun obsolete right. because a lot of our newer parts are different uh, the piston system is a little different uh, because it takes AR-15 standard barrels where the original gun had a pressed in barrel so things are a little bit different for our new upgraded upper but we started with the legacy gun first so we wanted to make sure that all the support was there for that rifle so that it didn't just make it you know, obsolete. Yeah. Well, and so talk about a, a rebellious company in this day and age for you guys to go down this path. Where, where's the passion? Like, where, where's this come from? Um, the drive to, you know, bring something that was out of date back up to date to put something new on the market um, that people are looking for. Well, the main thing in Canada is the holy grail of the non-restricted, right? So a lot of our black rifles, they call them fall into the restricted category, like the AR-15, for example. And the 180B was always this kind of diamond in the rough that kind of hung out there, and everybody dis like discarded it. But it was a non-restricted rifle in Canada since its conception, the 180B-2. Huh. So it was always sitting there waiting for someone to pick it up and make a new version non-restricted for the market. Right. So when for years it's been kicking around in my head that maybe we should make a new version of this rifle. And when Barry and Gord came and talked to me about this originally starting this company it was one of the first projects we put on the docket wow. for, for the customers and, and it wasn't even 
it wasn't even so much a, a business decision to make it as as it was more of a passion. It was like, let's show we're we're a new company, let's show the industry what we can do. Um, we don't really care about selling X number of guns. It's 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 all it was all about showing. Hey, this is what we can do. Look what we've done to this kind of outdated model yeah. and how we've upgraded it. So yeah, it was a showcase for capability yeah. and yeah. Yeah, because we we originally started out to be an accessory company, <clears throat> right? Like we originally wanted to do rings and rails and muzzle brakes and barring pins and all the replacement parts that Canadian shooters have trouble getting from the U.S. Right? Because we've always kind of been a victim to that. Like a lot of our parts that we look for come from the U.S. and then we have to wait or they're not in stock three months or four months uh, or six months back ordered. Or, and, yeah. yeah. So we decided to step into that role and see if we could fill that niche. And when we started talking about it, we're like, well, muzzle brakes and to the average guy, not impressive, right? Like people don't know what goes into them. But we figured if we took on this 180B project and updated this, it would really show and it'd get people talking. Right. Yeah. And, and so have you found that to be true? Are people talking? Do you guys? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right on forums, and you go to uh, even down in the U.S. Like we haven't sorted out uh, export import regulations for the U.S. yet, yeah. because a lot of uh, ever since Obama was in, a lot of black rifle parts cannot be shipped into the U.S. Oh. There's a lot of paperwork to go through. Yeah. So we're focusing on the Canadian market right now because that's who we built our products for. Yeah. Uh, but we have had a lot of forums in the U.S. A lot of U.S. people contact us wanting our parts. Uh, even forums like AR15.com out of the U.S. Oh. where they talk about us a lot there. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. And they found us. It's not. It's not. It's not markets that we've gone after. It's markets that have kind of come to us and said, "Hey, found you, and <laughs> how do I get parts?" Kind of. Yeah, because so. we've done zero advertising. No. Right. And for people in the U.S., southern U.S., to be like, "Who are these range warrior guys?" and start sending us messages, that kind of shows that we're doing something in the right direction. Yeah. So and what do you think is the is the difference? What's the differentiator? And, and I don't mean for you guys to swing your dick here, but if you put it out there, what is it that your accessories have that the other people don't? Or what are you focusing on? Well, the main thing for us is that we don't. We just want to make parts. That's that's our core underlying philosophy. So we just want to make parts, good parts for people. Yeah. So we don't mark them up dramatically because they got a name brand on them. Like there's muzzle brakes out there, three hundred dollar muzzle brake. I mean, realistically. It's you know a hundred dollar part, right? Like, yeah. but the name brand makes it a lot more expensive. Yeah, gotcha. So for us, we just wanted to do really good design, really good engineering with really good quality materials, but do it at an affordable price that suits Canadian price points better. Oh, nice. Yeah. In in addition to that, the three of us have a very long background in manufacturing. Right. So that is an inherent strength with Range Warriors. We can totally. manufacture the parts, and we know how to design to. To manufacture for quality yeah and we're and we're not making two we're making a hundred or two hundred right. kind of thing so we're, we're using those uh those quantities to keep the cost down and, and we just pass that on to the the, the retailers and the, and the end users so nice that in itself is very different because there are multiple manufacturers in canada now that do firearms and accessories and stuff yeah. there's a handful of quality guys doing it yeah but the thing is is that most guys doing it are making them as a one-off part, as a two-off part. So gotcha. now you got to pay that high production cost on, on lower runs, right? Yeah. So the main thing that people need to realize is that Range Warrior took on this as a project. And because we make the larger quantities to keep the price down, Range Warrior's taken a lot on its plate for, yeah. this, for this project. Right? Well, you guys have really invested in the market itself, right? Well, That's... we invest in each other and in the company every day, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, and, and I mean... Market-wise, you, you can look around and go to any uh, firearms for sale website kind of thing for accessories, and and uh, you put their filter on of, of items that are only in stock, and all of a sudden the list of parts on their website goes from 350 down to 50 uh, because there's 300 of parts that they do technically sell, but they don't have stock on. So Right, so they're uh, back-ordering and yeah. waiting until they hit a certain threshold before they go into production again. Yeah, yeah. Or they're getting them out of the states, and they're and they're just they're, they're a reseller kind of thing, gotcha. and, and they don't they don't have the option to get an equivalent Canadian product at a at a good time frame. So yeah, that's where we step in. Interesting. What's your favorite part right now? My favorite part? Yeah, 
Like, and I'm going to I'm going to direct people uh, in the description. There's going to be a link to your site, and you've got a couple muzzle breaks up there right now. Um, is it the muzzle breaks that you love the most? Is it the is is it the whole upper that I saw? Good question. Uh, <laughs> my, my my actual favorite part is the nameplate that's going on my 180B because <laughs> it's it's it, it, it's very customizable, uh, and and so we've got. Uh, our own production models that we're kitting out for ourselves for our own use, uh, and so it's got it's got my name on it. It's got the the company on it. We're very proud of the company itself. So yeah. uh, to me, I mean that it's kind of lame, but that's what it is. That's like when I go down in the range with with that firearm. That's that's cool to me. So yeah, like for me, it's I spend so much time doing solids and drawings and and thinking this stuff up yeah. that it's kind of hard to pick out one part that I like the most. Yeah. But I think that... Uh, all your babies. Yeah, like everything. It's kind of like your kids, right? Like you might have a favorite, but you'd never say. But I mean, uh, I think that one of my favorite ones, I posted a picture on my Facebook uh, when the company first started. So about a year and a half ago. And my little guy, two years old, is still in a jolly jumper. Yeah. And I, in the picture, I'm drawing one of our first muzzle breaks. Oh, cool. So I've got that kind of... That's kind of the thing that keeps popping up my feed. That's, that's kind of the Bermuda? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Uh, yeah, that, and that's kind of our signature break as well. That was because, like Kevin said, that was the first one that we designed, kind of thing. Yeah, and it works really well, and it's it's different from, it's got a different look than what's out on the uh, on the market right now. It's, it's probably it's probably my number two. It is it's sexy. it's really cool in its simplicity for yeah. how it how it works. Interesting. Yeah, yeah my favorite uh, is actually the entire upper because there was a lot of work. Lot, yeah, there's a lot into of that, engineering into it. I'm pretty proud of what we've come up with. Um, yeah. There was a lot of hours put into it, and, and we did it pretty fast. And the modularity of it, and, and the and the bolt release, which we were told couldn't be <laughs> yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> I had I had over a yeah. hundred people on a forum say the one eighty B never had a bolt release. It's not designed it, to have a bolt release, and it can't be done. <laughs> Request denied. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later at the gun show, here's your bolt release that you said couldn't work, but yeah, we put it was funny because we put that we put a literally a three second video clip up yeah. of uh, not even the full the full rifle but just the lower with the bolt release and and it snapping off and then the video was all over the place with people sharing it yeah um, all down through the states all yeah. over guys messaging me how did you do it like have you redesigned the lower and i'm like no it'll even work with the legacy gun yeah yeah, we, yeah. Like, and wow. that's some of the that's some of the ones that we're getting from the states is how do i get one of these bolt releases yeah. um because it'll fit in all the standard AR 180, the 180B, the 180B-2. The only bolt release, the only one it won't work in is the original AR 18, which was full auto anyway. Right. So uh, for <clears> those <throat> that don't know that are listening, what the heck is a bolt release? Bolt release is something. So on the last it releases the bolt. Yeah. <laughs> when you fire the last Next question, duh. when you fire the last shot out of the magazine, uh, the bolt catch will hold the bolt to the rear for yeah. reloading the magazine, and the bolt release releases the bolt, loads the next round without having to re-rack the slide. It's simple technology, but apparently people didn't think it could be done. And the benefit being that you don't have to remove your hand from, uh, the, from your firing, from position. Your firing right. position. Yeah. So The cool thing is is that some of the major hurdles that we came over, that we overcame, uh, sorry, with the upper was how to attach the barrel and how to put the internal slide rail in there for the, uh, for the cam pin. A couple of these things, if I told people how we came up with it, they probably wouldn't even, they think that it was silly. So <laughs> our, our upper has two removable side panels, which is revolutionary in design. Yeah. It allows for the gun to be changed from left to right hand, any number of combinations. So basically trying to figure out how to do this. <clears throat> First, we're going to do an insert. We're going to do a bunch of stuff. And <clears throat> I was watching Tales of the Gun on the History Channel. And they were showing guns of Winchester. And the lever guns back in the 1800s yeah. had a removable side panel. So that you could get in there and mess with it, right? And change your trying springs and all that. So actually, our side panel removable idea is from 1860. <laughs> oh, we just that, updated something. it and brought it forward to a semi-automatic. And nobody's ever thought of it before. Isn't that crazy? Except for that guy in 1860. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys have an ambidextrous uh, safety yes. too, right? Yeah. Is, does that fit into that whole pattern or is that just something that... That, well, no, that's just, that was an easy... That's easy, easy yeah. Easy. It's the actual original safety with an ambi attachment on the other side. Yeah. So it'll work in the legacy mm -hmm. gun. It'll transfer over. Yeah. Uh, I'd say that 70% of our parts are backwards compatible to the legacy rifle. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. 
And even the ones that aren't backwards compatible, we made the legacy equivalent. Yeah. So like we upgraded the firing pin for the new gun, we upgraded the bolt carrier, but we also make the original firing pin and the original carrier, and so we make all the original parts as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. We got some interesting feedback when we first debuted the side panels too, because there, w- there was no middle ground. People were either, <laughs> oh, that side panel, that is ugly, I don't like that, and it's got the, uh, and then the reply to that, not even from us, but from other people seeing it, what are you, crazy? That looks awesome. It's the best thing that's ever been put on. It's like okay, well, I'm going to go with the second guy because pol- I like his. Your I like audience. I like his better. <laughs> now I do like to debate because there's there's been times when we're developing the upper that online forums, people's conversations that we were reading, we weren't engaging, but we were yeah. reading it, and a lot of that information we incorporated into the design. Yeah. Uh, Same thing when we went to the Calgary Gun Show. We went to the Calgary Gun Show. The first bolt release was on a 30 degree angle. Guys said that they would like to have it more forward so they could use it with their left hand. And a little bit longer so yeah. that they could reach we it. We changed it instantly. Wow. So basically, all the input from the Calgary Gun Show turned into the standard rifle. So we actually shelved some of our first bolt releases yeah. just to make the ones that were requested. Interesting. So because we are fast on turnaround and production, and when me and Gore get together and start drawing stuff, it happens really fast. Yeah. So customer feedback can actually be translated within a month or so. Yeah. My God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible, and it, like so, you guys, what do you guys use for your three D software? Is it SolidWorks? Uh, Fusion three hundred and sixty. Fusion. Yeah. 360. So it's it's kind of new. Uh, it's only been around a few years, but yeah. anybody that's into the field that wants to get into three D animation, drawing, or any of that kind of stuff, uh, Fusion actually does a one year uh, kind of like a subscription based. So you pay once a year, and every two months you get all the new updates. So yeah. it's constantly being updated. Wow. Whereas the older software like Mastercam, SolidWorks, you buy a version of it, yeah. and then you have to pay for any upgrades yeah. later. Right. But and it, it's a it's a web based sharing yeah. Yeah, system cloud, as well. Cloud based. Yeah. Cloud based. Oh, so, no kidding. Yeah. So you don't have to be at the office, and you don't have oh, to. Awesome. Yeah, it's a login. Yeah, and it even allows us because right now we the main thing that we are trying to do as well. Because I mean, we do all our own products, we do all our own engineering and development and stuff, but we're also there to help other people in Canada that, that really want to get their products to market, but they don't have production capability. Right. So what Fusion allows us to do is from one end of the country to the other, we can have shared Dropbox folders yeah. where we can just drop solids, we can work collaboratively back and forth wow. right across the country. Well, actually anywhere in the world. That's incredible. And do you guys have, is that a part of your business right now that you are actively pursuing or that you're... Uh, well, basically what we did was we had a few uh, interviews with some with some other people that did some write-ups about our company and got our name out there. And we've been contacted by other companies already. Yeah, nice. So we're working in projects uh, net currently with other companies. Now, one of our one of our mission goals is that we never want credit for anybody else's ideas. Right. We have enough of our own ideas that we don't need to do yeah. that. Yeah. So one thing that we do, any company that contacts us, it's all just between us and them. Yeah. They can release their products 100% on their own. Nice. We'll just help them with manufacturing. Awesome. And what about some guy like you sitting in a, their basement designing this stuff but doesn't have the... We've had that too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because uh, there's a lot of gun guys in our country. Um, I mean, a lot of people in Canada think that the gun industry is some backwards you know throwback but there's a lot of really passionate gun guys in canada yeah and guys that have had ideas for years they might have them drawn on napkins they might whatever (laughs) but like we can take their ideas translate them into a 3d solid we can actually see if it's viable to make crazy and uh we help these guys out quite a bit wow uh, do you guys do like a, the three D printers now are like the the rapid prototyping tools? Do you guys use that at all, or is it all just uh, metal and? We we can generally turn things around quick enough on our own machines that we don't really worry about it. Oh, okay. We have access to it, uh, but a, a lot of our designs uh, are not so much. Uh, hey, we got to get this made and then check it, kind of thing. Yeah. It's we all, we've already designed it. We've we've done the research. We've done done the work prior, so we know it's going to work. Uh, and we can actually make a prototype run of of ten or twenty, mm-hmm. uh, put it through testing, and and then go to full production, kind of thing, with very very little hiccups. So, um, it is a good tool. Uh, it's just not one that we've needed too much of right. at this point. Well, because you guys have knock on wood, full machine <laughs> shop that you're. Well, the main thing for us, too, from a production standpoint is, so we can 3D print model stuff 
for a rapid prototype to check concept. But if we know the concept going in, then the main thing is develop the production. Right. So you kind of need to run it through the shop to get all of your programs, your fixturing, oh. all that stuff done. And then, so you take your test prototypes. We usually do about 10 for a, for a yeah. prototype. And we'll go test all those things. And then if they're good, we're ready for production. We don't have to say they're good, let's get ready. Yeah, yeah. We're let's all figure ready. out how to make it. We've yeah. already figured out how to make it. Yeah. And, and, and because in the initial design <clears throat> phase, we're doing everything, we're modeling it out and checking assemblies, we're pretty close by the time it ever gets to the shop floor. That's wild. So it's usually just minor tweaks. Yeah, yeah. like a chamfer change here. Yeah. Or, or maybe we might change a tolerance from 5,000 to 2,000. Yeah. Just to streamline production. Yeah. But that's about it. it. Yeah, and, and a lot of times it's more it's more on, uh, on visual uh, rather than operational changes, oh, okay. kind of thing. So, uh, widen like like you're saying, widen out the chamfer or, or whatever kind of thing. So, yeah, cosmetics count for quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we usually f stick to function first, yeah. and then go to the cosmetics yeah. after. That's why to look cool. Everyone wants yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. wants their fire to look cool. Yeah, and I mean we've developed a lot of relationships over the building of this upper too because. Uh, I'm not really sure. A lot of people put M-Lock, which is Magpul technology, on their firearms. Mm -hmm. They just copy the slots so you can buy Magpul attachments. Okay. But we actually took the time, well, Gord actually took the time, <laughs> to get a hold of Magpul to get the licensing so we can put all their name brand on our four ends and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So and um, they're engraving. We can we can we can put their logo onto our four ends. Yeah, and the, yeah. M the M lock logo will be going on the on the handguards. Yeah. yeah. But this stuff takes time, and and to do it the way that we want to do it, which is above board, uh, with a little bit of honor, you know, yeah. like we want to kind of give people credit for everything that they contribute. Yeah. So we just don't like to reach in and grab bits and pieces of other people's stuff, not without going through them first. Yeah, great. We're here to we're here to further the the community. Yeah, really is yeah is the base goal. Like I would love nothing more than for our company to be like the center of the hub, right? So every manufacturer in Canada that has a bit of trouble, every manufacturer or every guy that's got an idea that can't get it made, can't keep up or yeah. or whatever. Like I'd like for us to be there as like that silent partner for Canadian gun shops, nice. and with the people that they don't even know that we're helping, but we help them anyway. And that way, people out there that want the product just get the product because yeah. that's the main thing. Right? And, and in the end, it keeps our, our guys on the floor employed, and and uh, uh, it just keeps things moving along. Yeah, because a, a lot of our a lot of our conversations start with, you know, what you can't get here, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. and then the, the boys are are into the office uh, designing up what you can't get here anymore, and and. <laughs> Within a week or a week and a half, we're like, no, you can get it here. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah like even now, that's like, amazing. Even little things like forty-five degree mount that goes on the Picatinny rail. Like, go look at it. You can get some cheap Chinese crap, but you can't get anything good. Yeah. So, like, that's something that we went through this week. Yeah, this week. Yeah. So it's just little things. Like, we have over a hundred different products in queue waiting yeah. just to get made. Yeah. But we're trying to to keep up with the demand on the upper and the brakes and and stuff like yeah. right now, right? Yeah. So I think that. What we're going to do as we move forward is slowly introduce a new product like every month. Yeah. Uh, and that way then it slowly trickles out. Because even right now with our website, well, anybody dealing with the website is well aware. There's a lot of different things that has to go into the website. Yeah. And because our, our upper is so modular, it's hard to even know how to put all the parts on there. Yeah. yeah. So it's that's something that we're dealing with. Yeah, cool. Yeah, because you know you don't necessarily want to have your a home roll version where you can have all, but you also want people to be able to buy all the pieces separately, exactly, yeah. or put them together as a kit. Yeah, and yeah. so know. some guy, some guy gets his, his his firearm and he busts off a pin. He doesn't want to necessarily buy a whole new upper or right. or even a full parts kit. He might just need that pin. So we're yeah, you want to buy stuff. We'll do. Not a problem. Yeah, right now the the, the upper is is a fairly big piece of our resources it's it's uh, it's a big project for us yeah so once that's uh uh put to bed uh, a lot of this other stuff that we yeah. have right yeah it'll be it'll, it'll be like a floodgate be, opening yeah, up yeah. that uh yeah. our, be, all our yeah. efforts right now are, are going on getting the the upper out to market right so i mean it's it's pretty cool that way uh because we we kind of shotgun approached everything so we ended up with like 25 different muzzle brakes and we actually actually had to go through after we did all the fluid dynamics testing and stuff and go through and pick which ones we were going to release. Right? Right, yeah. We'll pick these five and we'll pick these three 30 yeah. cals and yeah, sure. we'll get the other ones later. And yeah. Interesting. What was, and so what was it that you, what, how did you choose? 
uh, between well those. basically it's pretty easy like uh, <laughs> I, I Kevin I, just picked all the ones he designed no I did not I did not <laughs> no he didn't so basically the Bermuda was the first one we ever drew so that one was out oh, of who designed that Kevin that, that was me <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then we did uh, then Gore came up with one that was called the Titan so we incorporated that so we, right we away. scrapped that one right away <laughs> yeah. I was a little bit skeptical I was a little bit skeptical but then when I fired it it was good so yeah we saw that one too Interesting. And then uh, we looked at, we had three muzzle brakes up, and then we're like, well, we need a flash hide or two. So, I mean, it's an it's an AR-type rifle, so you don't really need a break. Yeah. And we want versions for the 30 cal. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so, I mean, we just kind of, basically, what one do you like the most? And we all just sat in the room and picked out the ones we liked, and yeah, nice. the ones that go on there. Yeah. Now, mind you, there if we had if we had other people that weren't us, they might have picked totally different ones. Yeah. yeah. But the good thing is, they'll see them in a few months anyway, so it That's doesn't right. matter. Yeah. yeah. But these are the ones you're going to roll with, and yeah. out yeah. the door they go. That's yeah. great. Um, now you guys are based in Calgary, uh, and you guys are going to be down at probably one of the gun places here in town. Are you going to be demoing uh, the? We have uh, a couple of things in the works with some of the local ranges. So basically, I've known I've known the gun community in Calgary for almost 20 years. Yeah. So just about anybody in here that's retailing, selling, or training, or teaching, or building, I pretty much know them all. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at setting up. Because you used to retail sales and, <laughs> and, and do it all with them. Yeah. So I worked with a lot of them for, for many years. So I think that uh, one of the first ones that stepped forward was the Shooting Edge in Calgary. Yeah. Uh, so they want to actually do a review video, comparison review. Oh, cool. Uh, they'd probably like to get me on talking about it, but we'll see. But they're, they're going to put on an RWA day as well. Oh, so cool. So when, yeah. when we get the, uh, the full production out, yeah. There will be a day there where we'll have four or five rifles on the line. Nice. Uh, ammo will probably be supplied. I'll be there to answer questions, show some yeah. demos. Yeah. And we're not to, and we'll be doing uh, other range days at, at different ranges. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll be doing some field trips and yeah. cool. Because we have had inquiries, but it, inqu- it requires some travel. Yeah. Uh, also, the shooting center in Calgary too. Uh, Marcus and James, we know those guys quite well too. So we'll probably be at every range in Calgary before yeah, it's cool. over. Yeah. So anybody that's affiliated with one range over the other, or if there's any of those rivalries, they'll yeah. all get to see us. Yeah, stuff. great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you do have to stay. You know, it's about the community. It's not about yeah. exactly. one place over yeah. another. Oh, no, we no, have, and that's exactly it. We have zero, uh, why well, I say biases in this industry. Yeah. Uh, everybody's trying to just do good for the community. Everybody's doing the best job that they can, and sometimes life trips you up, but we don't hold it against anybody. Yeah. I mean, even for us building our company, we've we've found some hurdles that we were like, oh, okay, we got to get through this. Uh-huh. So it's it's understandable. But main thing for us, and for me especially, because I spent so many years working in the gun industry, and certain people won't work with certain people, and certain people won't do that, and certain, and we don't want any part of that whatsoever. Right. Uh, we want to be, if nothing else, we want to be that one friend that's a friend to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, just you're doing it all for the right reasons, and that's uh, that's one of the things I love to hear. And you guys being able to take on small projects that help other people, um, you know, allow them to white label their own stuff that you guys are helping manufacture. I mean, all this stuff is it sounds weird, but it's it's a little uncommon, and it's so great to see, and it feels so Canadian. Yeah, <laughs> well, 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 and yeah. and that and that's kind of where this all kind of stemmed from. Is we want we want to eventually be the Canadian provider of firearm accessories. Yeah. Whether that is under our own name or anyone else's name, we don't care. Um, but we just want we want products to be available for, for people to get. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can go to any message boards or forums and that kind of stuff, and everyone's like, uh, there, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of excitement of, oh, yeah, when I get this, I'm going to be putting this on and all that. But those threads go on for months and months because people don't get the parts to put them on. Right. So, it, it, so the you know the yeah. excitement dies. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I mean, I know people personally that have planned projects with firearms, and then because they couldn't get the parts, they went to a new project. Oh. Right. They just couldn't get the parts they needed to build the rifle or yeah. the parts they wanted to do it the way they wanted, so they just scrapped the idea and went with something else. So are you guys ever planning on getting into handguns? Uh, handguns is kind of. It's one of those things where it's kind of a little bit done to death, a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, there's such a wide variety in the market. 
And there's already some really good companies in Calgary that are doing custom on handguns, doing custom Cerakote, doing custom machining, yeah. uh, like uh, Black Box Industries, for example. These guys are really good. Um, we've had some talks with them about projects might collaborate later, but okay. they, there's some really good guys, and they're doing it for all the right reasons as well. Oh, great. So sometimes there's certain projects that we look at where we realize that if we took that over, we're directly competing with someone that's good for the industry already. Right. So what's the point? There's no point. Yeah. So yeah. The, that's great. So collaboration can yeah, come into play. Yeah. We'd rather partner with them and help them make their parts and, and get more out there awesome. anyway. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, way back but when this first company started first getting talked about, because primarily our company was Oilfield. We're Alberta, we're Calgary. On oh, the manufacturing side. Yeah, so yeah, we okay. were downhole tools and oil field and, you know, everything, everything. Yeah. everything to support the industry. Yeah. And the yeah. past... And then 2015 years. happened. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's 20 years of manufacturing experience yeah. in yeah. that industry. Yeah. Wow. And then 2015 when we had the downturn and now with the new government, you know, there's, there's no ease happening for the oil field industry anytime soon. Right. And I mean, we had 27 employees that we really wanted to keep working. Yeah. And so with the gun knowledge that I had and we were all talking and we we're like, it's a risky venture to say the least in Canada with the climate. But we figured we were up for the challenge, up for the fight. So it keeps our guys working and not only our guys, but our outsourcing for our coatings. Yeah. Like we provide work for up to eight companies with, with our parts. Yeah. So there, there's potentially like two or 300 people that got that's, jobs. That's Calgary and, and Alberta and, companies. Yeah, yeah, Calgary and Edmonton. We try oh, to keep everything in Alberta. That's yeah. awesome. So, uh, like, I'm not even originally from Alberta, but I moved I here. I couldn't tell from the accent. <laughs> <laughs> but I moved here in 2001, and no province in Canada has ever been better to me. Yeah. So this is where I've made my life. I'm here now until I'm done. Yeah. So I like to support Alberta businesses and, and Alberta workers, some of the hardest workers in Canada. Awesome. Very cool. Um, let's, uh, Barry, what's, uh, what's your favorite movie right now? My favorite movie? Holy yeah. crap. Uh, I'm, I'm a geek. Any of the Marvel movies. Oh, yeah? I'm up there, yeah. I yeah. can't remember the last time I... I got two kids. I can't remember the last time I went to a theater that wasn't Smurfs or something. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, any of the Marvel movies right. marvel guy yeah what about you kev oh, i'm more doom and gloom i'd say one of the best ones i've seen lately is probably wind river or the road oh uh, okay. yeah i kind of like the we're movie. never going to a movie again. <laughs> now, now wind river we can was... go to the same theater <laughs> yeah. we'll go to different movies yeah uh, the, the road is a little dark i would admit yeah. but it's very real yeah. so i can't help it i'm a prepper at heart so see i'm, I'm the opposite i want something that has absolutely nothing to do with reality yeah candy flies yeah. yeah. What about you, Gord? Yeah, actually, uh, Kev, Kev mentioned the road. I, I enjoy. I, I enjoy all movies. I guess one that I can just watch over and over and over. It's kind of cliche, but is is Shawshank. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that. so Gord's good. got four kids. That's the last one he saw in the theaters. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the original release. <laughs> awesome. Um, when you guys travel, where do you travel, Gord? What's your favorite destination? Uh anywhere there's a beach. Anywhere? Okay. Cool. Yeah. How about you, Kev? I'm a mountain guy, so I do a lot of backpacking and oh, okay. stuff like that. It's basically where I go. I'm either on my motorcycle or I got a backpack on. One of the two. Nice. Or both. Or both. Or, or both. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh, you, Barry? Uh, I got a place out, in, out near Kelowna, so we, we go out there now. Uh, I do like the hot vacation, but not if I'm doing anything. If I can if I can sit at a pool and drink, yeah, that, that's fine. It's like but, kind of all inclusive. But I'm not, go of- I, yeah, I'm not going to a beach area and then going hiking. That's just, <laughs> just will turn me into a pile of liquid. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, you guys have big readers? Do you have stuff on your bookshelf right now? Uh, I audio book stuff. Audio book? Okay, cool. Right? So <laughs> Once he most- learns to read, it'll be great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, reading, I don't have time for that. Trying to read, I got a two year old at home. You open the book, is like, Daddy, I want to read, and then I'm reading Blippy. So, right. <laughs> but uh, audio book, I listen to when I drive and when I ride too. Sometimes I get in the mountains, I'll listen to some stuff. Nice. Yeah, you got the high tech. Uh, yeah, I got the Santa on my helmet and oh, stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Barry? Uh, again, all science fiction, fantasy type stuff. Stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with the real world. The real world is too effed up. Like, yeah. 
I want if I'm if I'm doing if I'm doing relaxation, I'm I'm doing it to get away. So yeah, some escaping. Uh, yeah, it, it needs an elf or a dragon in there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Or cross your fingers, both. <laughs> oh my god! Elf ride the dragon I, is the best. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Gord? Yeah, I I I do a lot of reading, uh, and my tastes vary depending on my mood. Yeah. Uh, one place it usually doesn't go is Elf or Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm just finishing The Stand by Stephen King oh, right now. And cool. uh, I read biographies. And I think one of my all-time favorite books is uh, Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson. It's a sci-fi book. No, I love Neil Stevenson. I've never been able to get... Like, my wife has bought me four or five different biographies of people. And I get one chapter in and I'm like, I don't care. Like and it's it's people that I like like Alan Doyle or uh, Neil Young that kind of stuff and no, yeah. like it's great for going to sleep but <laughs> it's just it just does not hold my attention. Uh, Did you ever read Cryptonomicon from Neil Stevenson? No. Oh my god, it's so good. I'll have to put that it's on ridiculous fun. Um, now you guys are coffee enthusiasts to say the least. <laughs> um, I don't have to drink as much coffee as I want, Dargy. <laughs> 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 he's on his third cup right now. It's only the sugar he's watching, not the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do you guys uh, are you guys into the whole microbrew uh, craft beer scene? No, I don't even drink. You don't drink? No, just coffee. Just coffee. Yeah. Uh, All right. I, I I I do enjoy beer, <laughs> but I'm I'm more mainstream. Uh, I like I like a good craft beer that doesn't have the aftertaste that you like chew on for for. 10 right. seconds after you take a mouthful kind of thing. I like a good strong yeah. taste, but I don't like the aftertaste. So Cool. Yeah, yeah, I like trying a variety, but I'm the same vein as, as Barry. I don't like a really strong aftertaste. Yeah. Like there's a new, there's a new brewery up in uh, Airdrie, Fitzsimmons Brewery, and I really like their beer. Yeah. yeah. Like they've they've got that and they've got the best of both worlds for me. It's like they got that craft beer taste, but very little aftertaste kind of thing, so I really like really enjoying theirs. Yeah, they're good. They were actually on the show. Uh, I had Cody on what two weeks ago. Oh no way! Yeah, uh, super fun. Cody and Pam are amazing. Love those guys to death. All right, <clears throat> last question. Well, maybe last question. <laughs> Coals or natural gas for your barbecue, or wood? What's the what's the consensus here? Wood. Who puts wood in a barbecue? <laughs> Well, it depends. It's called a fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm in the backcountry, yeah. wood all the way, because I, I cook over fire almost every weekend. Yeah. But if I'm home, natural gas. Natural it's, gas. It's ready to that, go. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm natural gas for me. Dude, I'm that, lazy as hell. Yeah. I'm not gonna... <laughs> I just want to turn the valve and hit the auto igniter and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm going my steak. <laughs> and hey, you're supporting the industry, right? <laughs> yeah, there you yeah, go. My auto igniter fails. I'm just going out for dinner. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even bothering to get a match. Like, <laughs> who's, got, who's got time for that? Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, all right, <laughs> a favorite cut of meat to grill. Uh, the, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, for me, it's T-bone. I like the T-bone. All right. Ribeyes. See, that's a Newfie thing, T-bone. Like, when, like I'm originally from Newfoundland. And <laughs> that, that was it. Like, that was the epitome. You had fancy steak dinner. Oh, you're getting a T-bone. Oh, yeah, I'm getting a T-bone. Because like, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the only thing that tastes good after it's frozen. <laughs> in <the> Newfoundland. <laughs> Lobster or crab? Neither, not a shellfish guy. Crap and I'm from me. Newfoundland. I could lose my Newfie card. Yeah, you might just for, for that. But I grew up in a in a mining town, so I'm not a big shellfish eater yeah. either. But lobster, I guess. I, I, okay, yeah. I have to ask: Is Newfie an acceptable term? 100. Depend, percent Depends on your connotation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I can tell you a story. Uh, I was I was in a math class in university, in in Victoria. And uh, math has always been my strong point. So I was I was in this stats class, and I was I was acing the class, and I was the only newfie in the class, and the prof that we had was a real dick, <laughs> and didn't really help students or anything like that. It was a small class. What was his name, Barry? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Professor Dick. Um, and at one point, this one this one. A friend of mine was asking uh, asking questions, and this prof looked at him and went, "This is easy. I can't believe you can't get it. What are you from Newfoundland or something?" Oh, and I can't remember the rest of the class. And that was very early into the class. And then uh, did it take him to task? On the, it? Well, the next the next thing that I that I that I remember 
You were standing over his body. Well, no, a, a, buddy was going, a buddy was going, come on, man, class is over. And I don't remember any of the rest of the class. Holy shit. Now, at the time, I was in the military. And this was, uh, this was a prof in the military. And I didn't say anything. And uh, because I was actually looking to, to go on leave the following week. And in order to get that leave pass, I needed to miss certain classes. His was one of the classes. Oh, so I didn't say anything because I needed his signature to say I could miss his class in order to go on this leave. And the fucking guy never did sign the paperwork. Oh, man. And so at that point, it's like, okay, yeah, now I'm taking you to task. <laughs> I mean, when I first moved here, uh, so I used to talk really fast. I mean, <laughs> used to. Used to. <laughs> no, this is like 10% of my normal talking speed yeah. when I first moved here. And I remember first moving here, and, and I used to go to the guys in the shop, and I'm like, I'm going to the store. Do you guys want anything? And I had to repeat it five times. <laughs> to the point, oh, sorry, you guys want anything? Yeah, because to the point, they didn't understand what I was saying, right? So <laughs> it took a while to adjust, but it, at, for about six months, it felt like I was talking to my two-year-old. Because I'd be like, <laughs> I'm going to the store. Would you guys like anything? It sounded like I was talking so <laughs> slow. <laughs> but to them, that's normal human speed. You know what? Right? Yeah, I was going to back you guys. I'm a lifetime Albertan. But now, screw you guys. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I heard on the yeah, radio. So it depends on connotation. <laughs> like, I, heard, I, I heard on the radio a year ago, I think it was, that a Newfoundlander moved here and he wanted to get a vanity plate that said Newfie. And the registry told him it was a racist term and he couldn't have it. <laughs> it's a term of endearment, <laughs> I've yeah. always thought. I think I think that if a Newfoundlander says, can I have my Newfoundlander plate that says Newfie on it, you should just give it to him. Yeah. Right? He's not being racist against himself, man. No. Or is that possible now? Because everything changes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably it is. We are so sensitive these days. No, you can't make fun of yourself. You, you can't. Yeah. It's not right. No. Yeah. It's crazy. That's probably where we're at right now. I haven't checked in a while, but <laughs> maybe don't. Yeah, don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an interesting world right now. Yeah, well, it's politically charged. It's everybody's got an opinion. Everybody is, you know, uh, believes that their opinion is you know, valid. Valid, and let's be honest, a lot of opinions are not. <laughs> well, they got to be based on a certain amount of fact, I think, to be valid. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Absolutely. I think any opinion based on three or more memes. Should just be shut down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the threshold, hey? Yeah. Like yeah. Three or three, more. Three, three more memes. Yeah. Three, yeah. Yeah. three plus. Yeah. Greater yeah. than three. If that's your reference material. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, yeah. If you can footnote that. Yeah. <laughs> Angry cat. <laughs> just hang in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, guys, thanks so much for coming in and sharing your journey. This is wild. And thanks I, for having us. Yeah, yeah, a thanks a lot. Yeah. Can't wait to get my hands on one of these things. Yeah, so. there's a, there's exciting things coming as well, and, and and we're always very close lipped about what's coming down the pipeline, because we might get part way through something and go, no, that, that we don't think that's going to work, so we're, we we shelf it and, and move on to something else. But we do have a lot of stuff coming down through the pipe. That's, that's normally we won't nice. we won't announce anything until we've proven all of the manufacturing and uh, the use of the part and make sure it, like it performs like it should right. and anything that's in testing phase we'll never talk about just because a lot of guys will start writing saying when can I get it when can I get it right and that pressure like even now with the upper because a couple of the dealers that we brought on board with us uh, actually did like they pre-sold some and stuff uh, now we were not in that boat we never wanted to do that yeah. but we can't help what dealers do so now because there's there's some guys that have paid for our upper two months ago. So oh. now we're, we're talking with them now about the, the release date coming out now in September. Yeah. So, and, and the gun guys in Canada are top shelf. Like as long as you're talking to them and you're honest with them, yeah. like they, they are right on board with everything that you need to do. So uh, it's pretty cool, but you'll never hear anything that's, that's not ready. From yeah. Us. yeah, awesome. So I can go and buy it, and then, then uh, yeah, and then when it's and it shows up on the website, it's good to go and and, yeah. and in and stock. In stock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. And I love the philosophy of no back orders. Yeah, you, what you what you see is what you can get. Yeah, and that's that's uncommon. Yeah, that will always be our standpoint, even as as it starts to catch on more. Like even now, because people try to steer your company, right? Yeah. So people try to give you input and try to help you go in directions they want you to go in. Yeah. And, and that's fine. We'll take all input, but we're pretty steadfast in our resolve of yeah. where we're going. So. Yeah, like even even if uh, we had any given product and, and 
uh, a dealer came in and bought all the stock. We don't have anything that we can't turn around in a yeah. in a week mm. yeah. to replenish stock. So it's 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 a no brainer for us. Yeah, that's awesome. Gordon, any final thoughts? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he's a man. He's a man of good words. Good talk, Gordon. Good talk. <laughs> he just your, sits back. Your there. cat's killing me. So. Uh... Or are you allergic <laughs> to cats? <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> Can you tell when my eyes start? I, I should have. Uh, yeah. I thought you were just getting emotional. I thought, I thought you were just being passionate. passionate <laughs> just, just hear that queen. You guys, please. Are, <laughs> love you guys, man. Stop talking. I got to get out of here. Uh, sorry. I, I have some Benadryl if you need some. I'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So links links are going to be in the description. Um, check out rangewarrioraccessories.com. dot uh, Check out all these cool parts they've got coming up, and you guys are going to be all over Canada. So thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coming up next week, I travel all the way to Vancouver Island to hang out with McLean Kay, editor-in-chief of the Orca, to talk about the media on the left coast and what it means to balance reporting. Oh, and we get to do it in a biker bar. Check out next week's episode, Rebel Rebel, every Monday.